the end to his ministry opened new doors for his increased ministry that he might have never imagined. I want to share with you one more story and then kind of some homework for you um, as you're stuck at home, maybe many of you, uh, and how we deal with this, the season of life that we're in. Um, there was a story that I came across years ago in the book, The Case for Faith by Lee Strobel, and he was writing about a friend of his named Mark Herringer. And um, I cannot even imagine the situation, but um, it was uh, Mark Herringer's uh, wife um, accidentally uh, ran over their child in their driveway. And they were both within earshot and, and um, when this happened, and when they realized what happened, again, just trying to imagine the horror of that situation of two parents running out to the driveway, seeing what had happened, and just the, the guilt. And uh, I can't even imagine. I'll start crying about it if I think about it too much as I sit here. Um, Mark Herringer was not a pastor at the time, but through that ordeal and through the healing that God brought to him, he left his career and actually became a, a minister. Um, after his, he and his wife had gone through the heartache and the grief, and of course I'm sure that's a grief that you never fu- ever fully recover from, but it's a wound that will never go away. But as they received healing from their relationship with, with uh, the Lord, he wrote these words. We live in a broken world. Jesus was honest to tell us that we'd have trials and tribulations. Sure, I'd like to understand more about the why, But I know that the ultimate answer is Jesus' presence. It sounds sappy, I know, but just wait. When your world gets rocked, you don't want philosophy or theology as much as you just want the reality of Christ. He was the answer for me. He was the very answer we needed. You know, and that's what we saw earlier in the story of Job. Job wanted answers, but when God showed up, that that was enough for him. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. And that's where I would want to leave you tonight with, with, that, with the theme of that verse. In fact, maybe that could even be the verse that you meditate on for the next few days. When you hear that verse, the first word there is to cast. Uh, the word literally means to throw out or to throw upon. It means that these things that are bringing you worry and anxiety and fear, throw them to Jesus, throw them over to the Lord. Um, surrender control of them. I know sometimes we do that and we just grab them right back again. And if it's a constant daily process of giving those things over to God, and as long as you continue to return to him, that's okay. And the more you do that, the more you trust him, the more you seek to live obediently in giving those needs before you, you'll find the easier it is to let go of those things to the point where eventually you can let them go and leave them be. But cast your anxiety, throw out, throw upon those things upon God. He's asking for them. He wants you to give those to him. I want to encourage you to deal in truth. Man, there's so much news and facts and um, fears that are being uh, shared. Um, Make sure that you're not passing along false information, that you're not going upon supposition or gossip. Don't get your news simply from social media. Um, Make sure you're dealing in truth, not just about the current crisis we're in, but in all of life. Uh, So much of our anxiety is created because we're not abiding in truth. We're acting upon what feels true rather upon what is true. So, Deal in truth. What's true about the situation? What is true about what I'm actually responsible for? What is true about the things that are clearly beyond my control that serve no purpose for me growing anxious or worrying about them? And lastly, I just want to encourage you to be aware of your triggers. All of us have triggers. There are certain situations, there are certain people, there are certain experiences that easily bring those anxieties back to us. And sometimes in life, it's, it's just wise to avoid them. Um, Other times, you need to confront them. So I would encourage you to seek wisdom from God to know which you need to do in which situation. In James chapter 1, we're told there that if we need wisdom, to ask God for wisdom. And he is generous in giving that to us. With the caveat that says, when he responds to you and gives you that wisdom, then we must be obedient. If we don't, we're just like a man being tossed around on the waves like the ocean. So seek God's wisdom of knowing which of those situations, people, experiences, do I need to just avoid? Which of them do I need to confront? Um, And if you pick up that anxiety again, again, go back, (laughs) it's like wash, rinse, repeat. Go back to step one. Cast that anxiety upon him. Repeat as often as necessary. Listen, I hope tonight has been helpful for you. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Um, It's been encouragement for me to be able to share this with you and to to be reminded of some of these truths myself. Um, We're gonna be here again Sunday morning at 11 a.m., 
Uh, we're going to have some worship up here. We'll have music and, and singing. And uh, so uh, it's your chance to sing as loud as you want to because nobody can hear you right there in your own living room while you're singing along with us. Uh, but we're going to do some worship and then I'll have a message uh, from the Word to try to encourage you as well. And for all of our church family that's out there, um, please, during this time of isolation where we don't get to see each other as often, uh, I would encourage you to do all you can to not be isolated. Um, connect with each other um, through whatever forms of communication that you can, even though we might not be able to have a lot of personal contact. Um, don't stay hidden. Don't stay away. And if you have any needs that we can minister to or pray about or pray for, um, please reach out to us. Your, your church family is here for you. We love you, and God bless you. I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Father, again, thank you so much for this time to share in your word tonight. Um, thank you for the hope that we have that only comes from you. Um, Lord, uh, we certainly pray for, um, we pray for answers. We pray for vaccines and cures. Um, we pray for, um, Lord, for this, uh, the, this virus that is moving so rapidly, the Lord, that you would diminish the, the power of this thing. Um, but Lord, we also know that we can't see all things at all times. Um, and so, Lord, as we go on this roller coaster ride of, of dealing with life as it is right now, Lord, help us to be reminded that you are still here with us. You are still God and you're still present and that nothing surprises you, nothing has caught you off guard. And so in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the storm, uh, Lord, we just, we pray for your peace. We pray for your comfort. And I pray, Lord, as we, re as we receive that and we experience that, Lord, I pray that we would share that um, with others who desperately need it. Um, help us to be good neighbors um, to all those in our communities, whether they live next door to us or whether we're connecting with them uh, online or through any kind of form of social media, Lord. Um, help us as your body uh, to be a shining light of truth uh, in a world that's struggling in darkness right now. Uh, Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you for your presence in our lives. And we pray all these things in your powerful and holy name. Amen. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys.